Greetings friends, I am Agamemnon and welcome to this next episode, I believe it is episode 12 of StarCraft Happy Hour. Um, it is a lovely sunny evening out and we're glad that you guys were able to stop by and watch what we're going to be doing this evening and by the way, it is only myself this evening because unfortunately uh, Furious was not able to make it. He had other uh, more important things to do I suppose. What could be more important? Anyways, so uh, this evening, because I don't have Furious George with me, and I've got a couple really... Well, I haven't got to watch the replays, but I've been told that they are excellent. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sit back. We're going to cast a couple games. We're going to cast a game uh, from Oscari, who I think is in Sweden. And we're also going to cast a game from Bozorg, I don't know what where he is from. But first, we're going to get started with Oscari's game. This is going to be, I believe at the time it was a gold versus gold, and I, I think he is now in platinum. Um, so why don't we just jump right into the game. This is going to be game number one for the evening. We're going to go through two games, uh, as long as we have the time for it. And uh, say hi in the chat, and uh, thanks for coming out, guys. Uh, again, uh, I'm Agamemnon. I think I already told you guys that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to mention. I don't know. Please subscribe and follow to our Twitch channel and to our YouTube channel uh, so that we can keep making these videos. Uh, let's jump right into the game. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit the play button and introduce our players. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, that didn't work. There we go. Play. All right. So in the bottom right, we have... Uh, hold on, how do I zoom in again? Uh, hold on, zoom right in. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. All right, let's do this. In the bottom right, we have our red Terran, Toxic. And, uh, yeah, that is his... Well, that's how I'm going to pronounce this. Toxic. Because in other games, he's had a name that looks a little like Toxic. So, in the bottom right, our red Terran is Toxic in the top left. We have the Blue Zerg, Yellow Cat. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what our players are doing here. We have, um, what do you call this thing? <laughs> we have an Overlord Scout going to the far right. Now this is a four player map. So obviously we can see that he is checking out, first of all, the nearest. I'm not sure if you can actually spawn in the nearest positions on this map, but I could be wrong about that. We see Toxic is going for a uh, barracks wall off at his front ramp. Always a safe thing to do against a Zerg player. At the same time, he is sending out his scout to go and find out where his opponent is. He's also searching for uh, a near uh, near spawn location. Not realizing yet that his opponent is actually in the in the far, far opposing location. Um, <clears throat> meantime, our Zerg opponent seems to be uh, content... Oh, hold on. No, he's going for a... F he's going to go take an expansion before the three minute mark, so that's a very relatively early expand, or a normal expand, as you might say, for Zerg. Put down the spawning pool first so he has an option for making some zerglings. Does not yet know where Toxic is because he is scouting on a huge map with incredibly, incredibly slow overlords. So I don't think we're going to expect for Yellow Cat to figure out where Toxic is anytime soon. Back in the Toxic base, he now has one Marine out. Going for one gas. Um, very, very standard play, it looks like. Uh, probably not going to see any fast Reapers. Yep, there we go. We do have a Reaper. So we are going to see a Reaper come out, and he's going to now find his Zerg opponent. Unfortunately, those Zerglings were just uh, on a move command, so they were not able to get a worker kill on Toxic's scout. But the Queen is going to get revenge. However, he does get in. He sees there's only one gas. Uh, and he's going to get back out. He saw the expansion as well uh, from Yellow Cat, who still does not know where his opponent is. 
And I gotta say, I think that it would be better to scout early with a worker for uh, Yellow Cat in order to find out things like whether or not the opponent's got an expansion up, whether or not he's one basing, uh, all those things at least he could figure out early in the game, but these uh, Overlord Scouts are just, they're just a little too slow. Reaper for some reason, okay now he's moving, he was camped out in the middle of the map. Uh, I don't think those Zerglings are going to see him, they're going to walk r right by. And unfortunately with the Queen, um, this Reaper I don't think is going to do much more than actually get uh, scouting. Um, no worker kills. I don't. I don't imagine he's gonna be able to get a worker kill. Oh, he might get one. Yeah, he got one. Okay, cool. So he did get a worker kill. That's excellent. Uh, oh, jump up. There you go. Cool. Now, if this queen gets into position, she should be able to repel the reaper. Uh, the reaper is gonna get away. Will he get caught by the other queen? Yes, he's. He does not want to get killed by that other queen. Oh, but he has nowhere to go. He has nowhere to go, and he's gonna hide. Oh, he's going to heal inside the Zerg base. A little farther, a little farther. Oh my god. Okay, he's going to take another shot from the Queen. He's going to jump down. Oh my god. And the, the Reaper gets away with one worker kill. But he did live to tell the tale to his friends back in his base. He's going to heal up. He's going to rock it on home. Or just camp out at the Watchtower? No, he's going to go all the way home. He wants to heal up proper. But that was some pretty cool micro by the uh, by Toxic, making good use of the Reaper harass and the Reaper heal. Also remember, uh, friends, that Reapers can be built from a um, sorry from a barracks without even I think do you need a tech lab? I can't remember. I think you might not even need a tech lab, but I could be wrong. But they do need gas. They do need gas. In the meantime, back in Toxic's base, we see a grand total of three barracks and one factory. Just getting that nice bio army up. I think we do have double gas going now. Yes, we do. <coughs> now, his money's getting a little bit high. Um, but I'm sure he'll be able to drop that very soon if he gets production going out of these barracks. Meantime, back in Yellow Cat's base, basically focusing only on, it looks like, a very, very small army, hoping for defense from the spine crawlers and the queens, and really just droning hard, trying to keep his uh, macro lead. Going for a Banely nest, so perhaps hoping for a little bit of uh, Ling. You know, the Lings now have speed, so maybe he's hoping to to run those lings in, turn them into banelings, and perhaps take out a good number of workers. I'm not really too sure what his plan is with that. Um, <clears throat> seeing how he doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, scouting, doesn't have a whole lot of information, doesn't even know that his opponent has actually taken a second. So uh, Yellow Cat seems to be pretty blindly going about his business, but it has not hurt him yet. Take a look at the units tab. We've got um, pretty steady worker production coming out of Toxic. Fortunately, he does have mules, which also helps, so the income is definitely in the favor of Toxic. Army tab is hugely in the favor of Toxic, um, but I think he really right now just wants to get a solid uh, gain on that second uh, base. Uh, Widow Mines now being produced. Uh, it looks like they're going to be used in a defensive posture. Yes, they will. In the meantime, we have that Baneling uh, transformation from Yellow Cat. It's going to be interesting to see what he's hoping to accomplish. Um, I, I don't really know what to say. I'm not sure what he thinks, unless this is a completely defensive uh, maneuver, so that if he does get attacked, maybe the armies will melt very fast uh, to these uh, multiple banelings, but I don't really know what his plan is, since he seems to have very little vision. Let's take a look at his cam again. <clears throat> yep, almost nothing. Maybe he wants to put down a Nidus here? I don't know. No, now he's going for... 
a spire. So it looks like he's, he wants to go air. But again, I don't know what he's basing these decisions on. <laughs> uh, it would be nice to see a little more active scouting on the on the part of Yellow Cat. Uh, Toxic, on the other hand, he is uh, he's being quite active. He's getting his upgrades. He's going for uh, Hellbats, getting his Medivacs, possibly for drops. And just building up that nice beefy ground army, especially with these Hellbats that are going to shred not only workers, but also uh, lings if they ever engage. I don't even think this Overlord here is going to spot this drop. Uh, nope. The Overlord did not get to see <coughs> Toxic moving up with a couple of his Hellbats. In the meantime, Yellow Cat has taken a third. Saturated his second, and it looks like he has a saturated first, or nearly saturated. And it'll be interesting to see if this uh, medevac can drop these hellbats. Hopefully, there's no worker line to be spoken of, but... Okay, a few workers are getting into position on the third. Here comes a drop. Possibly, he might be able to get... Oh, well, I think that was... No, they, it was not spotted, but... The workers are proxy mining because this hatchery has not yet been built. Um, Toxic is just getting ready to drop, but he's waiting for the right time. Maybe waiting for these uh, for the workers to get uh, all of them on these uh, on this mineral line. In the meantime, Toxic is also floating over his command center. He's taking a third of his own. And the drop has happened. How many kills are they going to get? We've got one, two kills, three kills. Oh, stop getting distracted by the queen. And hopefully he can pick up these... Oh, the hellbats go... Oh, he got one hellbat out of there. And he has hit the accelerator. And he's presently running away. Oh, but they're... The mutalisks were able to easily catch up. In the meantime, there's a bit of uh, troop movement up into the center for Toxic, but I don't think that's a good idea. He's got vision. Yellow Cat has vision of Toxic's small little army there. They're going to get picked off by the Mutalisks. That's not going to be any problem whatsoever. Let's take a look at the unit tab. 60 workers to 51 in the favor of Toxic. So his macro really has been a lot better. But we do have these Mutalisks coming, and I'm not sure that Toxic is ready for this. We don't have... Oh, we do have a couple uh, missile turrets up, so that's going to be okay. This third is very vulnerable. Looks like the Mutalisks are going to get shredded. Oh, he's just sitting there. Oh, he's lost so many. Let's take a look at the units lost tab. Uh, it's still in the favor of Yellow Cat. And Yellow Cat's going to uh, supply block our friend Toxic here, it looks like. And the Marines are just going to stay back and make sure that his workers cannot be taken out. No, the Marines have now stemmed forward. Oh! Oh man, those Widow Mines are awesome. Widow Mines got... Oh, it looks like they only got two kills there. I guess the Mutalisks were not clumped up nearly enough, but this army is going to chase them away. Let's take a look at the Lost. So, units Lost are actually quite even between uh, these two players. But Yellow Cat is really... I mean, his supply, his supply is way behind Toxic, who's at 156, and Yellow is at 107. Just seems like he's just not doing much. Very, very light uh, saturation on the third. Small army, aside from those Mutalisks. It looks like we've got a nice big push coming from Toxic. 
I think at this point with an army difference that size, Toxic is going to have no problem, I think, uh, engaging this, uh, this Zerg army. Oh man, those, uh, oh shoot. Those Banelings actually did a good amount of damage and unfortunately those Marauders are not going to be helpful against the Mutas. Actually guys, you know what, I'm going to pause for a quick second, I hope you don't mind. But I gotta take those health bars off because they're not good viewing. So just give me one second. Uh, <laughs> let's do this uh, normal. Trying to get okay, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. Let's hit play. It's a little more easy to watch now. And I'm not sure if these turbo thrusters or whatever are. Yeah, they are going to outpace the Mutalisks, and it looks like Toxic didn't take as much of a loss as he could have. But he is going to return home, and he's going to have to address the anti-air, or the lack of anti-air that he has, uh, relying entirely on Marines. So, um, or he's just going to build more Marines, which is an excellent, uh, an excellent answer. Uh, Thors are actually being made as well, which handle Mutalisks quite well. Back in Yellowcat's base, who is at a 60 supply deficit, he seems to have forgotten to build workers. Um, he's, his worker production has really dropped off. Toxic, though, the macro beast that he is, has not stopped making workers, and he has taken a decisive lead in the worker count. There is no reason why Zerg should be with 50 workers on three bases. That's completely unacceptable. Um, these Marauders are going to really... Oh boy, I think they're going to have to jump back up into the Medivac, and the Medivac's going to... Oh, everything's going to die there. Yeah. Oh well. Let's take a look at the workers lost. It looks like uh, Toxic has been able to so far get seven workers. Um, so that's going to help pad his macro lead, but it's not going to make a huge, huge difference. <coughs> Although Yellowcat just doesn't seem like he's got a big enough army, he's not going to see these Widow Mines and they are going to fire as soon as his army comes in range. And do we have another one? Oh my goodness. The Banelings do a bit of damage but not nearly enough. Those Widow Mines took out so many of those Zerglings and I don't know if they really got too many Banelings but Toxic was able to uh, handle that coming in no problem because of those Widow Mines taking out so much of Yellowcat's army. Now it's very strange to see 22 minutes in the game the Zerg player with such a small supply um, but perhaps Toxic has just been making this game that hard for him that he has not been able to macro the way he would like. Now there are Banelings here Oh, The Thor is going to get surrounded. Will he get picked up? I think the Thor is going to sacrifice himself as he does and in the meantime, there's another drop in the third. The... Please don't sacrifice this army. Pick them up, pick them up, pick them up. No, they're going to go down because these Mutalisks will not even let the Medivac escape. Let's take a look now. We've got 13 workers actually killed by Toxic. So that has done... has been very nice. And now his worker lead is even higher. So Toxic really is in the position where he can completely out-micro his opponent. Or macro, I should say it completely out macro his opponent and just build a nice big army and even if he loses it that army is going to be able to rebuild extremely quickly. It looks like our Zerg player is beginning to go for roaches. He's getting an Ultralisk Den. But quite frankly it seems like a little too too little too late as Toxic is now taking his fourth and Zerg is stuck on three bases. One of them is mined out. We have idle workers just sitting at the fr at the um, the initial base. We have very light saturation, very light saturation at the second and the third. So income's going to be a major problem for our um, our Zerg player, and I just don't think that he's going to be able to produce the numbers needed to deal with Toxic's army. I'm not. Oh, Toxic is sacrificing his workers to free up supply. 
He's going to take out... Hopefully he's going to get more Banelings. Oh, that was amazing! Nice little worker sacrifice. That was excellent. Uh, Toxic realized that he got a little high in the worker count and wanted to free up a bit of room for some more. What does he want? I I don't know what he's building, but he wants to free up the supply for more army, it would seem. Now he knows this army's coming because he was on the Zelnaga Tower. Toxic's going for more upgrades. He was able to thin out quite a few Banelings with those workers. There's not nearly as many left here. Uh, he wants... To, he's going to engage. He's going to stem forward. He's going to heal. He's going to run back and try to not take too much damage from those Banelings. The Roaches, however, are being a little persistent, but they're going to go down very quickly. The Marauders are going to mop them up quite easily, and the heal on uh, these Ultralisks are just too late to the party, and they're going to fall extremely fast. I think that this push could finish off Yellow Cat completely. Uh, I don't think he has an answer to what Toxic is bringing. Uh, a couple Ultralisks are not going to hold off this massive bio army. Neither are those Lings. They're just going to get shredded. That's, there's no contest there. He's taken a fourth, which is a really inconvenient time for Zerg to take a fourth when he is so far behind. Um, three Ultralisks. They're going to go down like it's easy peasy. And there's just not enough that Yellow Cat can do to handle the aggression, the harassment, the worker killing awesomeness that is toxic. I have a feeling we're going to see a GG extremely quickly. And you know what I get that feeling from? I can actually see when this game ends. So, it's a pretty fair prediction. Ultralisks are just falling so quickly to this bio army. They take too many shots too quickly, and they make them look like they're little babies. Little tiny weaklings. Alright, so I think we're going to see a GG real, real soon, because Yellow Cat has nothing left. All right, there's the GG. All right, guys, so that was game one of uh, StarCraft Happy Hour episode 12, where we're doing um, subscriber replays that were emailed to us. So that one we watched was Toxic, or Oscari, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Once again, want to thank you very much for uh, sending in that replay. Um... Just going to check, make sure that everything's going smooth here. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Um, so now, what we're going to do is we're going to watch the next replay. So this replay was emailed to us from uh, Bozorg. And here we go. Let's see if that works. All right, here we go. We're jumping right into it. Game number two. And this is our last game for StarCraft Happy Hour. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thanks for watching. I am Agamemnon. Uh, normally with me is Furious George, but he is away for the evening. So we're just watching a couple games, and hopefully you guys are enjoying the games, having fun. Um, yeah, please uh, follow us on Twitch, the SC2 Mistakes uh, channel. And um, also please subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, we're also there, SC2 Mistakes. Okay, so let's introduce our players. We have in the top left. Okay, I'll see. My, hold on, I have to practice doing this. I am not GSL, but I'm or GOM TV, but I'm gonna try. All right. In the top left, we have the Red Terran Rageaholic, and he is going up against our hero. In the far right, in the blue, he is also Terran, and he is Tylord. Tylord is part of Clan Glue. I guess they are a very tight knit clan. They stick together. Tylord is sending out his uh, first worker as soon as he finishes that supply depot uh, for scouting. This again is a four-player map, and this map. 
I forget the name of it off the top of my head. But it's a very, very different map, and I'm, it's not one that I'm a big fan of, because in your base, you have another base. So, um, fast expansions are very easy, but it's also easy to be very deceptive. To, uh, oh, oh the, sorry, the other thing I don't like about this map is that the entrance ramp to your uh, base is very wide. It's not easy to wall off. Uh, I think you need actually more than the usual bunker, sorry, um, supply depot, barracks, supply depot. I think you actually need uh, four buildings, not the usual three. So I'm not a big fan of this. Um, however, it is fun if you're able to wall off that ramp before your opponent gets a lot of scouting and uh, it makes for some interesting play because if your opponent assumes that you're taking that natural expansion very very fast which this map is very tempting to do um, it may make for an interesting one base push uh, to kind of throw your opponent off. Uh, Tylord Lord may be in the position to deny scouting to Rageaholic if he's able to complete this wall off. We need one more uh, supply depot here. Oh, I yeah. It would be really nice if we could see uh, denial of that scouting. And Tylord is probably going to get. He's going to lose that worker. Yes, he is. All right. Now, if this marine can keep the SCV from coming in. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Oh wait, Rage Holic screwed up his. Uh, actually screwed up his scouting and did not get to see if Ty Lord actually took his second or not. So this could be very interesting because perhaps perhaps Ty Lord uh, in this situation is able would possibly possibly go for a very strong one base timing attack against Ty Lord sorry against uh, Rageaholic who has taken his second. Let's see if he knows. Uh, neither player knows if the other opponent has taken his natural yet so gonna be interesting to see what Tide Lord does in this situation but his opponent does not know if he's taken a second so it could make for an interesting timing attack if Tide Lord decides to uh, to try it Let's see uh, so <clears throat> two gases by Tide Lord um, we've got two barracks a factory. We got widow mines coming out. Fast widow mines are very, very, very hard to defend against, especially, well, you know, with the uh, sorry, with the orbital command, they can be scanned. Um, so makes it a little easier to get rid of them in a Terran versus Terran, as opposed to most other races who do not have that early game um, reveal kind of scout. Tylord now has a widow mine. Let's take a look at the army tab. Army tab is very easy, uh, very very uh, similar, I should say. Workers are similar. This is a very mirror mirror matchup right here so far. So it'll be interesting to see where the deviation takes place. Um, <clears throat> let's hit the production tab. It looks like uh, Tylord is. Slowing down his, uh, he's, he's not building his uh, workers quite as much as he probably should. Uh, so it'd be nice to see a little more constant worker production coming out of Tylord. Although he is going for his upgrades, hopefully, perhaps he's hoping for a very early push with a plus one. Whereas uh, Rageaholic is going for Marauder Marine with a Stimpak upgrade. And we've got five workers on his expansion, zero workers so far on Tylord's expansion. And this little guy is just hanging out at the front. Very nice, very nice. Looking around, checking things out, watching the transformation. Always fun, always fun. Uh, Tylord, though, I think it looks like he's, he's spitting out a couple uh, medevacs. Possibly going for a fast. Oh my God! Are we going to see widow mine drops? Yes, please, please. I do want that. Give me what I want. You know, it's funny. Um, since they gave the medevac the uh, speed boost, watching a medevac not using the speed boost feels incredibly slow. 
Anyways, uh, Rageaholic, because he did not... Nobody's fighting over the Selnaga Tower. He's not going to know that Tylord is bringing the hurt. He's put down a couple Widow Mines at his front, but this is not going to help against the wicked drop that is the Widow Mine drop. The speed boost is pushed into action. Oh my god, the Widow Mines... Ah! Uh, the Widow Mines are going to get to Burrow, but move him in. The, he's... There, oh, okay, we got one kill. He actually managed to kill his own medevac. Oh, he burrowed too late. Got one kill, and I don't know what more he can do. Oh, my God. Okay. Widowmine is reburrowed. These guys cannot, can no longer detect this Widowmine. So we might just get free worker kills on this Widowmine right here. Or is he going to take out the other Widowmine? Yes! <laughs> well done, Tylord! Well done! Oh my god, that Widowmine now has two kills. He's he's gonna take a while to charge up. He's gonna get taken out. Yeah, he got taken out. Alright, well he got two kills and one of them was a fellow Widowmine, which is pretty hard to do. And so that's pretty cool and pretty fun and pretty awesome. Let's go back to the Tylord base. We have a very low worker count on base number one. We have a very low worker count on base number two. Um, so we'd like to see a little more workers being made. Um, but it is sometimes hard uh, to make workers and micro them widow mines at the same time. Um, going now for some Vikings and some tanks. Very interesting. Looks like we're seeing a bit of a uh, hybrid bio slash mech play from Tylord. He, I think he got his upgrade so he wants to head out. We got the plus one. He's going out and I'm not sure how he's gonna do against these uh, Widow Mines. <coughs> I'm not sure the Widow Mines, I don't, oh maybe they do one shot a Viking. I think they probably do one shot a Viking. Uh, he doesn't want his Vikings to get too far ahead. There was a scan that went down, but I'm not sure where it was. The scan went down in Tylord's base. So now Rageaholic knows that Tylord is not home. He is roaming free. He does not see the army, but he does not know where that army is either. Uh, let's take a look at the units tab. Uh, we've got a pretty big lead on unit production for Rageaholic. Uh, but the army and army tabs are very even. So really, if Tylord wants to push an advantage, if he wants to gain an advantage in this game, I think he's really going to have to make uh, a name for himself using this army right here uh, to get uh, an edge of some kind. Meantime, he's reinforcing with more uh, marines. He's moving in. I think these widow mines are going to do a ton of damage. Oh my god, okay, so they only got one, and the, the but there's going to be another Widow Mine if they're clumped up too much. Okay, so he actually only lost. He did not lose too much of those Widow Mines. That could have been a lot worse. But it looks like Rageaholic's got a pretty big defensive army on the high ground. I don't know if he's going to be able to, to push in, but he might be able to pick up and do a drop in the back of the natural which is fairly exposed in this area right here but as it stands this is not going to be a winning battle um, for Tylord unless he uses some pretty sneaky play although at the back of the uh, the in his, uh, his opponent's initial base would be a really great get doing a little scouting with his uh, medevac and decides to go back realizing his opponent is only on two bases and perhaps Tylord is happy to sit at the front of the ramp and maybe just keep his opponent on two bases. Question is, will uh, Tylord then take a third for himself? Will he try to get a macro lead, macro advantage? And perhaps even starve his opponent out by keeping him on two bases so that he cannot expand himself. Only time will tell. We have Thors coming on the battlefield. Lots of upgrades for both players. 
Again, I, I think I would really like to see some nice drop play in the back. Uh, this army here is not very mobile because of the Thors, because of the uh, siege tanks. Um, it would be great to see uh, some really hard hitting uh, medevac drops right here in the, uh, the main. Take out some workers and then just pull back out and go back to your main army. That would be a lot of fun to see. So Tyler did decide to go ahead and take a third. Perhaps he is going for that late game mentality when your opponent's on two and you can get on three then you can just weather the storm and uh, let him lose his army as much as you. You'll always be able to build more than he does. And Rageaholic does not look like he wants to leave his base. He has vi He's done very little scouting. His only scouting has been done with um, orbital command scanning. He does not know his opponent's army size but he seems very content to sit in two bases and it looks like he might simply be trying to go for a max army on two base um, spending's getting spending is, our money is getting a little high for both of our players perhaps it would be good to see um, some more production uh, facilities or perhaps just that these production uh, facilities would be a, a little more utilized uh, the armies could be a lot bigger if that were the case. Okay, let's take a look at the... Oh, we actually got a nice scan and, and that uh, tank there is able to get a couple shots off. Oh boy, this is a very dangerous position for these tanks. Oh, but he has enraged the armies and they are... Wow, his army... Oh, that was a big... A big mistake for Rageaholic. He raced down, he got a little too excited by seeing those uh, tanks and lost a massive amount. Oh, it's a actually it's a pretty even trade, but I do think that Tyler came ahead on that. Uh, Rageaholic on two bases did have the supply lead and therefore probably the army lead. But now Tyler has, br has closed that gap and not only has he closed the gap, he's taken a third um, not quite saturated yet, but it will get there. And he has the option of, of maintaining his, uh, his income, increasing his income, whereas Rageaholic does not, and he's going to have to fight for his opportunity to take his third and to get away from this double base that's holding him back. Uh, how will these Thors stand up against the mainly bio? Oh, we do have a Thor for uh, Tylord. But it's going to be interesting to see a multiple multiple Thors against this primarily bio army. Looks like Tylord does want to run in with his medevac, do a quick little drop, perhaps in the back. Yes, please bring that drop in. I don't know where he's going with that drop. Um, but the scans with the um, the tanks are really drawing the ire of Rageaholic, who's rushing in. And this may not be good for Tylord. I don't see that he can hold off this attack. There's just too many uh, Thors. There's the tanks. Yeah, he's going to have to retreat. Um, Tylord's going to have to retreat. But if he's able to then retreat and defend against this push from Rageaholic, uh, he should be able to bank his lead uh, with that third, hopefully. But Rageaholic is, is really focused on staying on two bases and funding that massive army, not putting too much into workers. As we can see, Rageaholic... Well, actually, Rageaholic's got 64 workers on two bases, which is absolutely enormous. Um, so he is hurting to go ahead and take a third. Uh, his army's pretty big, but he's just got... He's got too many workers. He's got... It looks like he does not have enough money. What's his income like? Tylord's income has absolutely eclipsed the income of Rageaholic. And finally, Rageaholic now is taking his third while Tylord has had his up for quite some time. I don't really know why this is giving an 18 worker count when there's only seven, but... Oh, that's because more are on their way. And it looks like Rageaholic is going to try and do a little bit 
of damage in return. No, he's going to chicken out because those workers looked a little too tough. So he's going to return back to his army. Um, I'm not sure if he knows about that expansion, but if he does not know about that third expansion, he sure should because he saw those workers going there and they would only be going there for one reason, and that is to work. Uh, those tanks, unfortunately for Tyler, were not sieged up. And his army is not entirely engaging. I'm not sure he knows exactly that this is... Here they go, they finally moved in. But Rageaholic has done a lot of damage because Tylord simply was not paying attention to his army at that point. And he's going to have to pull back his possible harassment. And he's going to have to defend against the um, attack of Rageaholic, who has a pretty strong uh, Thor force moving up in the front coming up into the main and the natural slowly working his way in and I think this I don't really see how Tyler is going to be able to hold this off yeah unfortunately not paying attention to your army can lose your army and it happens that fast we also noticed that Tylord's money is very, very high. Um, so maybe we'll talk a couple, couple minutes after this uh, about what Tylord could have done differently. Um, oh, that's really unfortunate. It looks like the entire base is just going to fall. And surprisingly enough, we are not going to see a GG for another four minutes. <laughs> Let's take the, the army tab, uh, Rageaholics at 4,600 to the 600 of Tylord. Unfortunately, it looks like our hero, he is going to fall. But we sure wa enjoyed watching his valiant effort. In the meantime, it looks like Rageaholic is just suff siphoning in more and more units. Just rallying them forward to the attack. Tylord, in the meantime, is trying to produce out of a, just a couple barracks, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, in the meantime, at the back, wow, Tylord has finally figured out that we need lots. Lots and lots of barracks. But I just don't know how he can possibly stop this army. I, it's it's impossible. Even once these barracks finish, there's just not enough supply. There's not enough supply depots. He's he's completely supply blocked. And really, this is good game right here. Let's take a look at the units. We now have a the worker count is completely swung into Rageaholic's um, Rageaholic's favor. Yeah. Yeah, um, Tylord's money was way, way too high. Um, guys, stick around for after this uh, replay. It's almost over. And we're going to uh, talk a little bit about what uh, Tylord could have done better. And um, maybe we'll even get some input from Master Mike. If he was able to see this entire replay, I'm not sure. But he may have, ha may have a couple wise words for our uh, player Tylord who would like a little help into knowing why he lost this game. Now, I, Rageaholic, uh, I don't think he actually scouted that expansion. He didn't, but he saw the workers being transferred there, so he is um, alerted to the presence of another base. Uh, so he's going to move in. He's going to find the last and final stronghold for our friend Tate. Tylord. And Tylord, he's going to have to uh, GG very, very soon here. Yeah. Alright, perfect. There goes the GG. We're going to quit that replay. Okay, guys. Um, so, uh, thank you very much, Tylord. Or I think... Uh, what was your name in the chat? I think it was like Bozork or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for sending us that replay. And thank you for letting us uh, show it to the world. Because the entire world is watching. Um, 
so what could Ty Lord have done better in that game? Uh, number one, I think I would have to say, and Mike, uh, you can let me know if you agree, spend that money. So um, a couple things. First of all, Ty Lord could have had more worker production. And secondly, his money got really, really high. There were times when his money was very high and his production facilities were not constantly making units. So perhaps, um, I'm not sure what his control groups were like. If all his production buildings were on a control group, maybe that would have been made it easier to spend that money quickly to just hit the control group, bang, 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 and spit out those units. Um, that perhaps would have been useful. Um, but really, I think that when your money's that high, if you cannot produce enough units to bring your money down to a reasonable level, like let's say under 500, um, the Terran player, uh, Tyler, should have made a... It, taking that money, just grabbed a whole bunch of workers and made multiple production buildings in order to, once those production buildings were up, to mass produce a wave of, of units. We're just going to take a look in the chat. Um, actually, I'm going to bring the chat over to you guys. Let me show you here. Uh, so you can see what Mike has to say. Here we go. We're going to bring it over. That way you guys can see what I see. Alright, now, uh, control, alt, zoom. Is that zoom? No? Okay. So, unsure if you guys can, uh, see this, but let's take a look at what Mike has to say. So, um, <clears throat> okay, yes, yeah, so Mike, uh, I don't, if you noticed at the end of that game when, um, Tylord felt really, really, um, oh, welcome Jumbo Zerg. We just watched a couple um, subscriber replays and we're just analyzing the last one. So uh, if you noticed at the end of that last game, when Ty Lord felt like the game was over and he had to win, at his, I think it was his fourth uh, expansion, I'm not sure, at his fourth, he went into panic mode and he built like eight barracks in that, uh, that location. If he had done that, like, let's say he's in the game, and he say, he looks at his money and he sees, oh my god, I have 3,000 minerals, right? At that point, he should panic. Not when, he's, his ar when, not when armies are marching in and destroying his bases. When you see $3,000 in your bank, you should panic. And if that panic causes you to build, like, 20 barracks... Awesome. Get that money low so that once your money's low enough, you've got all those production facilities building. It would be nice if that was a gradual progression throughout the entire game so that you never actually get to the point where your money's that high. But if that happens, then we really want to invest in the production so that we can spit out massive amounts of units. Um... Trying to think if there's anything else. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Number two for uh, Ty Lord was paying attention to your army. So, one of the things that really, really hurt for Ty Lord was that last engagement uh, where um, oh, I forget his name now. The other Terran player brought his army in, and because Ty Lord was not paying attention to his army, Half his army was destroyed before he was even able to engage the battle. So that was uh, that was really unfortunate. Uh, but we had fun watching the game. Um, Jumbo Zerg, I'm going to check out what uh, what level those uh, those replays were. Um, let's go check it out. I didn't even look. Okay, so the the first one that we watched uh, with Toxic was a uh, platinum versus gold. I'll show you guys here. So that was a uh, platinum versus gold. Uh, the one that we just saw, uh, I can open it up for you. Yeah, it, it's definitely under masters. Um, I'll show you this, guys. Here we go. Open with SC2 gears. Here we go. Oh my god, that was a silver game. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that explains a few things. I I, I don't know why I, I watched the... Uh, the game with Toxic, and I thought that we were watching um, more Platinum, Platinum level play. Um, 
But no, that was not Platinum. That was two silver players um, against each other. And so both made a lot of mistakes. Um, but lots to learn from, right? Lots to learn from, and hopefully uh, Tylard was able to, uh, to learn something from that. Um, so anyways, guys, thanks for coming out for StarCraft Happy Hour. Uh, I'm going to check how much time we have left. Um, usually I like to finish up without, within about uh, an hour. But if you guys, if you guys, you guys kind of came into the show a bit late, would you like to see one of my uh, recent replays? If you want to see my recent replay, you can just say so in the chat. Otherwise, I'll wrap this up. Yeah, Mike is definitely right. If those, uh, if uh, Ty Lord was um, paying a little more attention to macro, he would have definitely been better. Okay. So we have the go-ahead from the chat. We're going to uh, check out one of my replays. Um, here we go. Let's go into SC2 Gears. Now, hmm, I'm going to show you guys my screen. I'm trying to think which one I should show you guys. <laughs> I want to show you one where I got, like, a ton of worker kills. But I'm not really sure how to do that. Okay, this is a PvP, uh... Okay, let's watch this one. This is the last game I played. And it's not super long, so it shouldn't take... Excuse me, it shouldn't take uh, too long to watch. Let's watch the replay. Alright, cool. Alright, thanks for, uh, for stopping by. Jumbo Zerg and Mike as well. This is going to be a gold versus gold. I'm just going to pause it really quickly just to let you guys know. Um, I'm presently number two in my gold ladder. I've, uh, I've been trying to follow uh, Mike's advice. And I've gotten, um, I've gotten eight wins out of my last 12 games. And this is the last game I played. So I'm kind of hoping I'm going to break into Platinum really, really soon. So let's check it out. All right. Let's hit play. Here we go. So first of all, we're going to introduce our players in the bottom right. Yeah, I'm bottom right. In the bottom right in the red trunks is the Protoss player, Agamemnon. And in the bottom left, this is going to be a fun name to pronounce, we have Shaka Malaka in the blue trunks, and he is also Protoss. Alright, so Shaka Malaka don't... Okay, Shaka Malaka is putting down his pylon. We're both doing the same. Uh, the 9 pylon is a nice, nice timing for the pylon. Uh, very interesting though, Shaka Malak has been putting... He puts down his 9 pylon and then he sends out a scout. Now, not sure what you guys think of the uh, pylon, then the scout, but I've been watching White Raw in his streams and he always, always... Th well, well, from what I've seen anyway. He throws down a pylon and does not scout until he builds his gateway on 13. So he builds that gateway on 13 and then sends uh, that scout out, much like a this, right? Now, um, I've just been imitating him. I don't really know what the reasoning uh, behind it is. But I've been finding that if you scout a little too early, that you end up with less information than you should get. So, for example... If you arrive in your opponent's base and he hasn't built a gas and he hasn't built a gateway and you know you're you're kind of looking around and there's just there's nothing to read there's no information but when you arrive as you can see here we arrive after we built our gateway well we see that there's one gas we see that there's a gateway we have a, a little bit more of an idea about what our opponent is up to Okay, so now I'm sending my um, scout worker, my worker scout, sending him up to a proxy location because what I want to do is I want to set up a proxy stargate because I'm hoping to do, in this game, I'm hoping to do some really good harassment with an oracle, uh, try and get those worker kills to get a nice early game advantage 
and then kind of turn that into a, a late game advantage. So we'll see. So it looks like his uh, cyber core is, or my cyber core actually, is going to finish up. Okay, so both of our cyber cores are finishing up at the same time. So this is a very, very similar game, except for the fact that I do have two gas, which is entirely necessary in order to get that Oracle, uh, sorry, early Oracle harass. Hopefully this scout won't get too much information. But because I have that proxy Stargate, we're also not going to have to worry about him looking in our base and seeing um, the Stargate. So it kind of de denies a bit of information to our opponent as long as he doesn't find out that we're actually up here. Which he does not know, as we can see. He has no idea. Yay! Also, some of the fun of the Gold Leagues is that scouting is not something that most gold players are really good at, so you generally get away with uh, get away with stuff like this. <laughs> oh, sorry. Like that. Yeah. Alright, so back in my base, I do also like to throw down two gates um, once I hit 300. So it becomes a three-gate uh, Stargate proxy. And the reason for the three-gate is basically that... Um, I do have some units to defend. And I saw, obviously, that he has a bit of an army coming over. I don't know about this, but I'm anticipating him coming to attack. So we now have a sentry who's going to be able to force field that ramp. And we're hopefully going to get these gateways producing uh, enough to defend any kind of an early attack. Got a worker kill there. I'm th not really sure what he was doing. I think maybe he was going to see if I had taken a third. And in the meantime, we do have our harassing oracle. Uh, three gate stargate is an all in. Um, it might be an all in, but I'm not really planning. I'm really only planning on using the stargate for harassment and the uh, three gate for defense so that I can then expand. So we're trying to get... Oh, looks like he's not paying attention, so we're going to get some pretty sweet worker kills. That Oracle got nine worker kills. We're going to back right on out. In the meantime, our opponent Shaka Malaka has taken uh, his natural. And I've delayed a bit of mining. I've got some worker kills. Nice. Ten workers have died so far in the filming of this episode. Okay, so Mike says if I extend before... Oh, there we go! Look at that! Look at that! Okay, so it's not at all in because I expanded before the 10 minute mark. Woohoo! Alright, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, alright, so... He has... I think he's got three gates... And he's just got three gates. So he's doing a three gate, and I'm doing a three gate with a stargate. Alright. Well, we got to come in for more, some more deliciousness. Interestingly enough, um, an oracle versus a stalker, the oracle will win. If the oracle doesn't run out of energy. Arrgh, so my oracle ran out of energy, she had to run back away. Uh, let's take a look at the unit tab. I've Our workers are even, so my worker production, i got to say, was not great in this game. Um, oops, sorry. My worker production probably could have been better, but I did have to invest in that Stargate, and I did have to invest in the Oracle. Uh, and I don't really understand why these two guys are going out here. I sent them out to scout, but I thought it was only one, so I don't know why I've got two there. Who knows? Okay, so here's uh, a bit of an engagement. He's trying to push his advantage, I suppose. Uh, the okay, so he still has that proxy pylon up here that he's using to uh, to reinforce. Very stalker heavy army.
But I'm really just trying to hold on. I'm just trying to defend. I'm not trying to uh, to get a big advantage here. I just want to get my second base up. And he's going to back off, and I'm going to retreat. All right, coming in for some more workers. Yum, yum, yum. Let's see how many kills we can get on this one oracle. <laughs> Yum, we're almost at 20. There we go, 20. Nice. Oh, move in, move in, move in. There we go. Alright. Come on, let's go get some more. Num, num, num. Okay, so now the Oracle's gonna have to run away. Like a beast that got 25 freaking kills. Nice. Oh, wait. Sorry, 28 worker kills. 28 worker kills. That's alright. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the units tab. Uh, now I've got 25 workers, he's got 13. Again, I will say I know I'm, I do not have enough workers. I know that. I know. I know. Um, that is something that I can improve on and I, I surely will. But I'm try I am spending my money and I'm trying to keep it nice and low. And I'm trying not to die to a really fast attack from a possibly very big army. And I'm also trying to keep him... Um, trying to keep him busy um, look at who's sorry uh, Jumbo Zerg look at who's gas I guess my gas is a, is a you don't have enough sentry look at your gas okay so a little more sentries obviously would help um, bring my gas down and provide uh, more force fields and guardian shields of course oh Sorry guys, we missed it, but guess what? Oracle just went in and got a few more workers. So he now has 32 workers. In his yummy little belly. Alright, a little... Come on, bring the whole army in. Very good, very good. Let's see that guardian shield go up. Uh, I'm just gonna... Oh, wait, pull back, pull back! Alright. I also decided to go for uh, Immortals because they seem to really handle Stalkers extremely well. Um, not great micro there by myself, really not. But should be good enough. We're going to pull back and we're going to keep uh, adding on to more worker production. I now have 36 workers. It was at 600 gas. Yeah, that's a bit too high. Yeah. So 600 gas is too much gas. And I'm doing it again. So it would be good for me to invest in more uh, sentries, that's for sure. Um, getting some upgrades, getting some shields, and I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose my oracle. Uh, he died, but he did get 32 kills uh, of, of workers, and that is definitely, definitely worth an oracle. Okay, so still, I, I am trying to focus more on uh, immortals because I'm concerned about his high stalker count. But I'm a little embarrassed to say that I only have eight workers on this uh, <laughs> on this uh, this expansion. That's pretty sad. And 13 over here. Oh my God! Why am I showing you guys this? Okay. <clears throat> So I'm spending my money on um, Immortals again because I really want to have an advantage when I encounter his massive stalkers. Uh, I don't know, he has no upgrades actually, like none. Uh, whereas myself I have 1-1. One, one. And I find that that's another thing that's really lacking in the Gold League um, is that people just don't pay attention to upgrades. So I think that does give me a bit of an edge. And also you'll notice that I am no longer building oracles. Uh, I am not going to overcommit. I'm not going to overinvest. I just basically now want to transition from that into um, a good solid game. The other thing I really like about the Oracle Harass is that it kind of causes opponents to overreact. So for example, Shaka Malaka has gone for a whole lot of stalkers to deal with one oracle like that's just not rational right whereas when I saw all those stalkers 
I realize that I can go for a bunch of Immortals. It doesn't even have to be that many, but it's enough to give me a massive advantage over my opponent. Now my money's getting way too high. My gas is embarrassingly high. Going for uh, Zealot Legs, spitting out more Immortals, and it looks like we're going to move out for a bit of a push. One thing I've really been trying to do is keep my Mothership Core on a separate hockey, which is three, uh, because I don't like hitting one, which my main army is, without getting my sentries. I like to hit one and have my sentry spells available. Then I can hit three and I can make use of my Mothership Core, so that's what that is. Meantime, throwing down some um, support pylons for my push so that not only can I attack, but I can also reinforce quite quickly. And let's take a look at the army tab. The army is much in my favor. This is not going to look very good for Shaka Malaka. He's throwing down the time warp, but that's not going to matter. Guardian shields are going to go up again. Please, please, more guardian shields. Oh, he quit. That was the end of that. That's it. All right, cool. Um, that was uh, my last game against uh, Shaka Malaka. Okay, Jumbo Zerg, I'm gonna actually um, I'm gonna send you my uh, my name. Here, hold on. So, uh, Jumbo Zerg, go ahead and uh, friend me in StarCraft, and uh, we'll play some practice games. That'd be awesome. Uh, everybody else, thanks for coming out for StarCraft. StarCrap. <laughs> thanks for coming out. Yeah, I know what I should work on. I need to work on worker production and spending. Worker production, worker production, I think. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you for coming out. StarCraft Happy Hour. StarCraft Happy Hour. Episode 12 was a lot of fun. And uh, I hope you guys had a good time, too. Thanks for the replays you guys are sending in to info at sc2mistakes.com. Um, thank you for tuning in. Please follow us on Twitch and follow at SC2Mistakes on Twitter because I always let you know when I'm going live, whether it's on SC2Mistakes or on my personal channel or on NoobGaming.com. So uh, glad to have you, uh, Jumbo Zerg and, and uh, Mike. And anybody else? I don't know who else is in here. Thank you guys for coming out. Lots of fun. You guys, stay classy.